So this is a, a little video from our last place here, stay in Cappadocia in a cave. Most hotels here are having caves as, as hotel rooms because it's such a tradition and uh, you can see it's, it's, it's very authentic and this night I told the landlady here I could, I could not sleep for four or five hours and I, I had very strong dreams and I had, uh, I had the feeling that this was kind of like a church, you see, it's like, it's huge, it's huge. And she said, oh, you're right, this was used for many hundred years, it was used as a church. You see, here, up here, it's still black from the uh, smoke um, of the fire, they had fire here. In summer, like now, it's very cool, even so outside it's about 30 degrees, but it's cool inside, it has a fireplace here. And I can tell you, it inspired in me a solution for the interpretation of quantum, quantum physics that was brewing in me for, for many years, but it was so crystal, became so crystal clear this night that I want to make a little movie uh, and uh, from this room here where this came together and I know this is something that will make quantum philosophy much more, much more practical and also realistic. Lying just beneath everyday reality is a breathtaking world where much of what we perceive about the universe is wrong. So here from the cave in Cappadocia, <laughs> a new interpretation of quantum physics. And as you could see in the introduction, and it's taken from a video on quantum mechanics that's wonderful. I can really recommend it. <laughs> Once you've seen this, you, have, you, you can save reading all the books that are around because it, it, it's a summary of all the books, then are hundreds on quantum mechanics, on the interpretation, a new age interpretation of quantum mechanics. And they're all the same. But here you have it in a fun version in like one and a half hours. And it's, it's, it's wonderfully made. It's like adorable how much effort they put into, especially the 3D and the, and the graphic, um, work in this video. And it's free to download. Uh, below you find the uh, the link to download it. I mean, I'm doing a lot of uh, 3D and also uh, video editing and I know this is amazingly well done. Uh, and as usual, or but as usual, 90% is just the narration of 30 years or 40 years of the development of quantum physics and so it's all okay, it's all correct, but then suddenly at the end uh, it comes up with a new age interpretation that is really b based on nothing but just speculation and just wishful thinking and it is basing its authority on, on the authority of physics because we are in this century, we are, we are brought up as believers of uh, physics and technology and we are we are being brought in this direction that look at this computers and all the great technologies all based on quantum physics so of course uh, quantum physics has to be true that's correct but they don't tell you that the interpretation is a su totally subjective thing and even Erwin Strödinger said that he has seen no interpretation of quantum physics that uh, uh, that is based on any reality. So, but they are using just like all religions before. They use some, some uh, amazing uh, people or stories, and then they base their authority on this. It's 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 the way it has been done for all centuries. But I'll give you here an interpretation that is useful, and. Uh, completely in harmony with all the, the experiments that are done 
and uh, I think this is a is a milestone and a, hopefully a, a breaking <laughs> point for much of the discussion. The view of the world has shifted thanks to these strange and mysterious laws that are redefining our understanding of reality. They are the laws of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics rules over every atom and tiny particle in every piece of matter, in stars and planets, in rocks and buildings, and in you and me. We don't notice the strangeness of quantum mechanics in everyday life, but it's always there if you know where to look. You just have to change your perspective and get down to the tiniest of scales, to the level of atoms and the particles inside them. Down at the quantum level, the laws that govern this tiny realm appear completely different from the familiar laws that govern big, everyday objects. And once you catch a glimpse of them, you never look at the world in quite the same way. It's almost impossible to picture how weird things can get down at the smallest of scales. But what if you could visit a place like this, where the quantum laws were obvious, where people and objects behave like tiny atoms and particles? You'd be in for quite a show. Here, objects do things that seem crazy. I mean, in the quantum world, there's a sense in which things don't like to be tied down to just one location, or so that's a very good and very funny, very nice, nicely done introduction to quantum physics. But it's always the same. It's always the same argument. So quantum physics, it's true, uh, has been defined on the level of, of microscopic um, objects like photons and electrons. And there are certain uh, ways that are not so simply to interpret uh, with our everyday experience. And then they make this transition, this shift. <laughs> uh, and it's, you imagine it, quantum physics is a hundred years old, but the interpretation has always been repeated and revolved about the same uh, concepts that quantum physics says everything is possibility. So really, also in our everyday life, you should understand everything is possible. And this is really based on, on the American dream, everything is possible. <laughs> it's just a philosophy, or actually now it's a religion, a new age religion, that's being tried for 100 years to be uh, s explained and also given the authority this um, the power of of uh, science, but it's obvious that what you see here in this movie that uh, uh, balls come out of the hole in the billiard don't happen, that people multiply suddenly, that there's three times the same person uh, doing different things, that they appear out of nowhere. So it, it should be obvious it, the macroscopic world does not. Appear it behave like the microscopic. So we cannot just say because quantum physics works on the microscopic work world. If we look differently, if we view the world differently, it's the same in this world, in this microscopic world. No, it's not like this. <laughs> it's very simple. As as much as we would like to to have this. But I'll give you now a new way of making the microscopic world understanding and experiment making them useful for our everyday experience. Albert Einstein was not afraid of new ideas. But during the 1920s, the world of quantum mechanics began to veer in a direction Einstein did not want to go. A direction that sharply diverged from the absolute definitive predictions that were the hallmark of classical physics. If you asked Einstein or other physicists at the time what it was that dif distinguished physics from all kind of flaky speculation, 
they would have said it's that we can predict things with certainty. And quantum mechanics seem to pull the rug out from under that. So yes, this is a very good point and uh, that most people even don't know that Einstein was not a friend of quantum physics <laughs> and that he, he said it's okay, it can um, make some useful predictions <laughs> how uh, to, for example, build an uh, atomic bomb, <laughs> but it is based on statistics. It is statistics and we cannot predict an individual, whatever, atom or electron, what it will do at a certain time. And he was really uh, fundamentally a Newtonian thinker. He, he thought that uh, we, uh, science, eventually, if it's real science, can predict every part of the universe like a clockwork. Uh, and this is not true for quantum physics. It can make predictions for uh, uh, large quantities of individuals, but it cannot make an, a prediction about the individual. And this is really, uh, I think it's the, it's the best part of quantum physics, and Einstein did not realize this, that it, it brings together both worlds, the worlds of predictability, but also of freedom. So if you have a clockwork, of course, we would be all totally determined. But if there is only a probability, then yes, there is possibilities. And But how to bring this together, how to bring this together in, an, in a practical way, uh, this has not been really understood. And this is what I want to give you uh, right now. So, as everyone by now knows, the quantum physics is hanging, at least the interpretation of it, is hanging on one big, uh, small experiment, and that's the, the slit experiment of uh, projecting electrons or photons on a slit or on a double slit, and that it behaves afterwards as if it's a wave. I, I would not need to repeat this because everybody knows it, but I show you this now again because it's 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 most one of the most wonderful uh, uh, animations that I've seen. They sent a wave of water through the double slits. It would split in two, and then the two sets of waves would intersect. Their peaks and valleys would combine, getting bigger in some places, smaller in others, and sometimes they cancel each other out. With the height of the water corresponding to brightness on the screen, the peaks and valleys would create a series of stripes and what's known as an interference pattern. So, and this is the, the central problem of quantum physics. You send a particle and a particle you can measure with a, like a photomultiplier. You know it's, a, it's, it's one thing, it has a location, then you shoot it on a slit. It doesn't have to be even a double, double slit. You sl shoot it on a slit and then what behind is on a screen registered, um, it's something that you only would see if it were a wave. So why is this a problem? Because really we know uh, a particle does not uh, disintegrate into a wave because at any point it can be measured as a, a particle and uh, as we know in most scenarios photons remain photons and electrons remain electrons and only in like big particle accelerators you can even uh, disintegrate them in, into smaller parts. So it is correct that there is a pattern appearing that shows as if what has been projected uh, or what is emitted from the screen is a, is a wave, but in fact we know it cannot have been disintegrated. So you see this pattern of course only if you have many electrons, you shoot many electrons, many photons, you have this, this distribution. And so now how if the photon or the electron does not integrate disintegrate into a wave how is it that one electron goes 
is uh, diffracted or uh, diffracted as physics says in a certain corner of the screen and another is diffracted in another corner of the screen this is the big problem so is this something is it now a particle what it was when the bowling person <laughs> what you see now started the, the the ball rolling or is it a wave that is apparently um, projected on the screen after the, the screen. So I'll continue this. So how could electrons, which are particles, form that pattern? How could a single electron end up in places a wave would go? So here, a single particle of course cannot create this pattern it's 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 the it's a it's a huge number of particles and can create this this pattern but even if you use only one it's di diffracted and it's diffracted in a direction or that is not uh, cannot be calculated it's 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 a probability so if you are the particle that goes straight that's one the most likely probability. Another one is diffracted a little bit and some others even you can see on the very side of it uh, they are diffracted even more. Those are uh, even uh, less frequent. That's that's a Gauss distribution and that's what I want to, s to sh show you. It's a very common phenomena in in all our life. So when do we behave like particles? And when do we behave like like uh, uh, like waves? So, a particle means to be <laughs> to be an individual, and a wave means to be part of a collective. And we are doing this all the time. We are either behaving like a particle, like an individual, or we behave part of a collective, like the culture. Like a, and if you travel a lot, you see <laughs> people are very much the same in every culture, uh, but they're different from one culture to another because they assimilate each other, they imitate each other, they have even the same dialect, they have the same customs, they have the same beliefs because of this uh, phenomena that we become uh, uh, like a, a, a wave phenomena in most of our of our life. So what we are is not we are an individual or we are a collective phenomena no, it depends on the situation. So when are we an individual? Of course, when nothing <laughs> specially happens, we go the same way, like a particle straight. We do the same thing again and again. We go to the same uh, office. We uh, repeat the same way to the office. We eat the same food. Uh, so like a particle, we are completely predictable <laughs> when we are an individual. So very, very simple. But then when do we turn into a wave? And actually we turn into a wave just like a particle always when there is some change, some obstacle. And that's what the Greek called a chronos time. So when you face an obstacle like this particle, uh, the, the slit for example, then something can change and often will change of course, many even if there's an obstacle go straight, and that's what you see in the middle here. That's the the, the majority of individuals that go straight. Even so, there is a, a, a possibility a chronos time, a DLE time. But then some others they are being deflected, and so now can we can we predict what you do? For example, when you uh, face an obstacle, let's say your car is being destroyed <laughs> or being stolen, can we predict what kind of car you will buy after this one? Yes, of course we can predict this uh, statistics. We know if you are German, you have like let's say a 45% uh, probability that you buy a BMW, a 30% that you buy a Volkswagen, that you a 20% that you buy a Mercedes, 1% uh, that you buy a Ferrari, and exactly this is what you see in the back. But can we say what you will do? No, we cannot. It's the same thing like in quantum physics when you be become part of a collective phenomena, of a wave phenomena, we can predict the likelihood of what you will do, but we cannot say exactly what you will do. And the same is when you face, for example, a health challenge. Can we predict 
that you die can we predict uh, what kind of uh, other side effects you will have can we predict uh, if you be healed no but we can predict probability yes and with anything like you you meet your midlife time let's say around 40 45 can we predict what happens no but we can predict the likelihood that you will be either very de depressed you can predict the likelihood that you will commit suicide you will we can even predict the, the likelihood that you uh, uh, change your relationship that you pr give up a long marriage that you move to another country these are easily statistical values that we can deduct from uh, from uh, uh, from uh, experience but we cannot say what you will do and exactly this is the case in life that when we face an obstacle when we face a chronos time or when something unique is given to us it has to not to be something negative it has to be just a, a chronos a possibility for change for example a, a lot of you inherit a lot of money then we cannot predict what you will do but we can predict with what likelihood you will do certain options. And now what you see in the back there is exactly what we call archetypes. The middle one is the, the standard uh, archetype of a certain culture. They go straight no matter what. And, and then there's the other ones and the very outside. This is like the, the very um, exotic characters. And this is not really uh, necessarily an effect of consciousness it's just the nature of things that when you face a, a chronos time and a delay time you are, can have uh, you can change and most will change or not most but uh, i think 32 percent in gauss distribution so those will change and where they will change uh, is not smeared out it's not like a, a continuous spectrum it's it's a quantized spectrum and this is also what we see in archetypes that not everything that's possible finds a buyer because some things just don't resonate they are not matching uh, a common archetype so this you could use also for of course uh, advertising and and the understanding what is archetypes it's the same thing what you see here on this screen is a perfect example of the display of archetypes in the realm of uh, of particles and so what what is this now how can this help us <laughs> not to uh, go in this this abstract uh, interpretation of quantum physics that everything is possible the heart of this theory which has given us so much there is still a gaping hole all the weirdness down at the quantum level at the scale of atoms and particles where does the weirdness go why can things in the quantum world hover in a state of uncertainty seemingly being partly here and partly there while you and I, who, after all, are made of atoms and particles, seem to always be stuck in a single, definite state. We are always either here or there. Niels Bohr offered no real explanation for why all the weird fuzziness of the quantum world seems to vanish as things increase in size. So, and this was also not his job and it's really also a misunderstood uh, the misunderstood interpretation of the uh, the quantum uh, experiments especially the, the slit experiment that really things are um, in in fact fuzzy that there's an electron here and there and uh, at different places no we can only say that we c we cannot uh, we cannot say where it is before we measure it. So once we measure it, we know where it is. And is this <laughs> different than anything that I explained before? Uh, when we face an obstacle in our life, uh, or we have a new opportunity, as I said, we 
uh, statistics can very well predict uh, w the likelihood of what we will do or if we will die or how old we get or of what kind of uh, disease we will die or what kind of car we will buy. It's, it's, it's completely quite predictable with statistics and this is what quantum physics is equally, just it's, it's statistics. So, but does it mean then that if uh, we know all these things and it doesn't give us a clue if you will buy a BMW or a Mercedes-Benz that you, uh, after you got the money, after you made the inheritance, <laughs> that you will sometimes have both or sometimes drive uh, the Mercedes and sometimes buy the BMW. No, of course, you, you, you buy one, but then only once the person who wants to know about you uh, looks at you, he will find out if you now have a BMW or a Mercedes. Same is like with the example of the midlife crisis. Uh, some, they will get depressed, some others will find that this gives them a new opportunity in their life and some others will develop a big belly. So, and many other possibilities that have their own st statistical probability. But does it mean that after this midlife crisis, uh, you sometimes get depressed and sometimes commit suicide and sometimes <laughs> you get a big belly and sometimes you change your wife or, uh, and you do it all mixed and fuzzily. <laughs> of course not. You, you make a choice. You make a choice and this is the power of consciousness. You make a choice and this is what I want to tell you. There is, there is no contradiction between the microscopic and the macroscopic. Uh, the, the, the electron does not become a wave. It behaves in, in as a, as a multitude. It behaves as if there were an interference of two waves, and it produces a pattern that is the same as if there were a wave projected on the um, this slit. But in fact, we know it does not disintegrate. We can measure it at any point with a a photo multiply, we know it doesn't in disintegrate. And the same is true for for humans when they face a challenge or a possibility, a delay time, a chronos time, we make a choice and this choice is predictable with statistics. And of course this is the main thing that quantum physics uh, uh, in the New Age tradition try to not see that there's only certain options. There are certain options that can be uh, calculated with statistical uh, uh, probability, but not everything is possible. Like in the slit experiment, they go not in every place, uh, but they go in certain places, and the same is true for every, every chronos, any DLE moment in our life. And why do some people go there, and why do other people go there? This is open to to your speculation. If you can, if you just want to say it's your choice, it's your consciousness. It's one thing, uh, but uh, two 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 brothers or uh, two sisters that have gone through the same education, the same parenthood, the same culture, uh, they make totally different choices. So where is the consciousness coming from? The other interpretation it was for centuries was, the, uh, was just a simple idea that there is a plan and this plan is given by the creator or by the creation or by the source and so if you go this way or that way, it's, it's, it's been given and the majority of people, or all people, can be predicted with probability, but the individual cannot be predicted uh, with, uh, any cer with um, absolute certainty. So this is really giving us uh, a certain amount of freedom, but also it tells us that there are certain ways in, if you take the slit experiment, that are simple and they are comfortable and they are most likely and they are 
middle one, the middle way is 68%, 68% of the people will just continue straight even so there is a possibility for, for change. So when you want to make a change and uh, you see there is a time of change, a chronos time, then you have to overcome some uh, some tradi statistical probability that forces you to actually go straight and you can uh, you can choose another way but you have to understand that this is not coming easy it's not it will have it will have need sacrifice it needs work and it's not like uh, the idea of new age it all is all just be, be given and uh, no energy is necessary to make deviation possible change possible and this is the interpretation i think that really makes 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 quantum physics practical and that we understand microscopic world is not fuzzy when we measure it it's it, it's clear where the particle is at a moment and the same is true for the microscopic world when we look and that's our chance our consciousness when we look we see w w what things where things have gone and if we don't we just say there's only probabilities there's only possibilities but when we look it has become uh, a knowledge of actual facts so that's that's as simple as it is and uh, i hope this helps you from here from cappadocia from this cave from this ancient church see i'm looking up it's 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 a thousand years and the, the smoke is still there and it was all about the same quest to find the meaning of life and the meaning of life is putting energy into a direction that you understand brings you closer to the source and they used for example, the techniques of being years and years in these caves, they even made the caves with, with hand tools because the energy that they put into making those caves, those churches, together with the information that they had, together with the, the vision, the mission that they felt, would make this transformation possible, and it did. And uh, so, so much from Cappadocia.